Hey everybody, it's Trixie from Healthy Nails. Thanks for joining. This is the first video in a two-part series of barefoot toenail restoration because we are doing both great toes. A huge thanks to this wonderful client for coming to see me all the way from Massachusetts. The video is long. I let all of my clients know the first time I meet your feet is the longest time I will spend with your feet. This is to ensure that everything is properly cleansed and prepped for our healthy nail journey. I hope you enjoy the video. Keep an eye out for part two coming soon. So although I like to rock out with my clients during a nail service, YouTube has said that is not okay. So I will be talking at you for the next couple of videos. I do apologize, but YouTube says that we can't have songs in the background because then we have copyright issues. I was trained and certified to perform this service by CJ Murray from Center for Beauty and Susie Gonzalez. It's a fabulous service that's great for anyone that needs partial or complete toenail restoration for a lovely cosmetic result. The nail does not get exposed to water beforehand because our nails are 10 times more permeable than our skin and it will just get waterlogged and it prevents the product from adhering properly as well as it traps all of that moisture in and that just creates a new breeding ground for infections and fungus and everything that I try to prevent. Right now, I am performing a dry pedicure on a single toe. So I'm cutting off all of the free edge. Cutting off sounds very, very invasive. I'm trimming the free edge. So we are cleaning out the hyperkeratotic material from underneath the nail. Real simple, it's all the hardened debris and dead skin that's under the nail when the nail plate lifts. When there's a space between the nail plate and the nail bed, that is a great place for skin to build up, sock fuzz, soap suds, all of this stuff coming out of the corner it's dead skin, it's cuticle. We're just gonna get everything nice and clean. This way we can have a prepared nail for the barefoot service. You will always see that I take my time. I do not rush on my clients. There's not a lot of pressure used to make sure that there's no pain, there's no discomfort, that everything is going according to plan. And you'll see that I get a lot of decent dead skin out from the sides and underneath. You always have to pay close attention to side walls. Sometimes when my clients cut their own nails, they may miss a small shred on the side, deep in the side wall, just because of the, the perspective, the point of view. You can't see your nails from the same point of view that I can. Using my nail nippers just to trim away that free edge. It's it's called a jaw. So that front piece, you see that little tiny 
bite. Every time I close the handles, it takes a little bite of the free edge. The main purpose in using nippers instead of the regular nail clippers is to prevent micro trauma when cutting the nail. So our nails have a natural curve to them. And if you take a big chunk, something that's curved when it goes to be cut tends to flatten out. And that will cause micro trauma underneath to the hyponychium where the nail is still connected to live skin. So that's why I use nippers. It's also what I was trained to do. A nail rasp is a fabulous tool. If you use them at home, please be gentle. Don't go overboard. They're like nail files for the size of your nails. They get under, they, they grab onto all of the gunk and chunks and stuff that's underneath and it pulls it out and it's great. It's also nice to use to file, gently file, the side wall of the nail to smooth out any jagged edges. One of the other tools I tend to use is also the side wall cleaner. And it looks like a tiny little itty bitty baby shovel that's perpendicular to the nail. So it goes straight down and it just scrapes stuff out. It's fabulous. It does take a lot of getting used to, to use it, just so you can make sure that you don't cause any pain to the clients because it will go down further than what you intend. A good rule of thumb, whether you are receiving a service at a salon or performing trimming and filing on yourself, if something hurts, stop. There should be no pain in a pedicure. There should be no bleeding, no trauma, no ooh where you're pulling your foot back or ouches. That's not supposed to be a thing. If you feel pain, it's because there is trauma being caused to live skin. That is not okay. When you go to a salon, you should be receiving good care. It shouldn't be done super fast with no, it's going to sound cheesy, but with no love, with no regard for the client. You are not just a customer. You are a client you are a human being, these are your feet. We only get one set of tires in our life. We absolutely need to take care of them. There are different types of e-file bits, like the one you see here. The colors do have meaning. You see red on the bottom of the band. That means that it's a fine bit. That means that the teeth on it are pretty small and it's able to be used on a natural nail. Sometimes you'll see a green or a blue and those are the medium and coarse bits. You never want a black bit used on your nail because those are extra coarse and those will just tear up your natural nail color. So right now we are just going to smooth out the extra edges, get rid of some extra cuticle that's on the top of the nail, and get everything super clean. When performing this service, it's a little harder and it takes more time because the foot isn't exposed to water first. 
So usually the foot goes in the water, it hangs out for a bit, everything gets soft and pliable and comes off easily. That's not the case with these. These take a little bit more elbow grease, a little bit more care and TLC. And that right there is a ceramic cuticle bit. I love this bit. It gets into all the nooks and crannies. Again, it's red, so that means it's a fine bit. It's safe for the natural nail and it's safe for skin. I can run that on my bare fingers and have no trauma, no pain. That's why I'm able to use it within the side walls to clear out all of the debris. And the colors of the bands are universal amongst manufacturers. The bands correspond to the grit of the file. And just a little FYI, yellows are extra fine, red is fine, blue is medium, green is coarse, black is extra coarse, and then you have gold and pink, which will not be used on a natural nail ever, ever. Those are to remove product. All of the bits you see me use are cleaned and disinfected between each use. I am licensed in New York State. I don't know what the other varying states rules are, but when you're in New York, something that is reusable must be cleaned and disinfected before it is used on another client. And if it's something that is only a one-time use, like the arbor bands that are really nail files for the e-file, or that nail file that you see that can't be disinfected, they should be thrown out after each customer. It is a one and done rule. A lot of salons and some clients will set a certain set of tools for each client that they clean and disinfect. They're supposed to do that anyway. These tools are supposed to be cleansed and disinfected before each use. And if you bring your own tools into the salon, that nail tech should be cleaning and disinfecting those tools before they're used on you because we are unaware of how you maintain your tools at home. Every service starts out at my salon with sterilized tools that are opened in front of the client and those will be all of my reusable tools. That's my stainless steel nipper, my stainless steel rasp, my sidewall cleaner, and my stainless steel cuticle pusher. Sorry, had a memory lapse for a second. There is an unopened disposable nail file and buffer. There is a dappen dish which gets cleaned and disinfected between each client that I pour the sachet callus cuticle treatment in, which is a fabulous product. We'll talk about that on another video. A applicator brush and a stainless steel foot file that can be cleansed, disinfected, and sterilized. So now that the nail plate is cleansed with Light Elegance Nail Cleanser, which is a combination of isopropyl alcohol and acetone to dehydrate the nail a bit and make sure everything is cleaned off, I will apply LCN's Connex Silver Plus. This is an air-dried bonder that must dry for two minutes. Each layer of the barefoot restoration process, all of the products are innately antifungal and antimicrobial. They will not cure or treat a fungus, but they also will not cause a fungus. As long as you follow the home care treatment and directions, you use LCN's Microsep, you spray it on the toe or you use the tincture and put a couple of drops on the toe and it just makes sure everything stays nice and clean.
Another thing to note about gels, and some people will also feel this on their fingertips when they go get a service. Gels are photo initiated polymers. So they cure from the bottom up, which means that exothermic reaction is going to cause a heat spike. And sometimes people will feel it as pain or burning. The easiest thing to do is remove your fingers or toes in this matter from the lamp, tap them on the surface, and ease them back in gently. You may have to do two rounds of the UV or LED light, but you will no longer have pain. And what it does is it gradually increases the exposure to light and the chemical reaction that turns the gel into a polymer, which is actually a type of plastic. The chemical reaction slows down. So her toe is kind of like a cone head right now because we have to put pressure on the skin to hold it down while I apply the product on the top to mimic what you would have as a free edge of a natural nail. I use regular scotch tape after I have laid it on the top of the glove just to get rid of some of the stickiness. This way it doesn't get stuck under the nail and it's just, it's easier. I have tried this with nail forms because I'm hard headed and I need to dry everything. It really does work the best with scotch tape. The nail forms get stuck because they are super adhesive and not all of them are actually made for toes and it takes longer because they have to be customized and cut and bended and folded and it just doesn't work. Once the barefoot resin has been cured, I will remove the scotch tape. And when the tape is removed, you'll actually see that it mimics the free edge because it's not attached to the skin. It will be slightly lighter in color, the same way that your nails do. The product is moved and shifted and laid so it is as thick as her nail bed and nail plate currently are. We want that to be level, coming straight out with a slight taper at the cuticle and a slight taper at the front of the nail as to mimic the natural toenail. We also want the side walls to be nice and clean, not super flooded. We want to create the most natural looking nail and it has to be level. And a neat little trick is if you move your finger or your toe up and down and watch the reflective light. If you see a, a straight reflection, you know you have a straight circle. After the barefoot resin is cured, we remove the tape. I do some shaping to make sure everything is nice. If need be, which it usually is because you want everything perfect, another layer of the barefoot resin is applied just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Sometimes those suckers are so hard to get out. Get, get, get. <laughs> Great thing about barefoot resin is it's made for pedicures, it is skin safe. You treat it like you will treat your regular nails. It can be filed, it can be trimmed. 
the general rule of thumb to follow for the shape of your toenails is straight across with slightly rounded edges. What this does is it prevents the nails in the corners from stabbing into any of the skin and causing ingrowns. Another good thing to know is always make sure your skin stays hydrated. You want your toenails and your fingernails to be hydrated. It's like drinking water. Everybody knows that we have to, but we just don't do it enough. It helps the nail plate lay flat and helps to prevent any issues in the future. What tends to happen when we get older and our nails and our skin starts to dry is they start to curl in on the sides. The last step in the process is to add the Barefoot Petty Seal Gel. It's specially designed to seal the Barefoot Gel so nothing can penetrate it. It still maintains its flexibility. If you want to leave the nails naked, I do a very light buff. This way the nails are more matte in the same similar fashion that our regular toenails are. Or you can apply regular nail lacquer or gel polish on top. It is entirely at the leisure of the client. A tremendous feature about the barefoot resin is that it is flexible and durable. So it bends the same way that your natural nail would. As you can see, it does have that flexibility where if pressure is applied, it will move with your toe. But if you stub it, it won't break. So it performs in the same way that your natural nail does. It protects the toe while remaining flexible. I have to give a huge thank you to CJ Murray from CJ Center for Beauty for sharing the education and making these courses available. 
it has been a game changer and I have been able to make so many clients happy. All right, folks, here are your before and afters, the nail that was removed, and the new nail that was placed on. Be sure to check out part two that will be coming soon. If you have any questions, any comments, leave it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.